Well, today we're looking at a Dick Smith TV. It's on my desk. I recently replaced this with this TV. It's another LED TV, also from Dick Smith, but now Dick Smith is owned by Kogan, I believe. This was back before Dick Smith sold out to Kogan. Anyway, this is an LED LCD backlit TV, a model GE6930. It's been in use constantly, 24-7, for about eight years now. Recently it started to get really dark and started to flicker and I heard a high-pitched squealing out of the back here of the power supply area. Now I can hear that. I still have some good high frequency hearing but it doesn't translate well onto the microphones I've got. So my theory is it's either the power supply has gone because usually with a switch mode power supply when they squeal capacitors are about to die or the power supply is overloaded. So that could be the LED string in the back that started to go as well. So I think what we're going to do is wipe all the dust off this and we're going to get the back off and uh, I'm curious about a number of things. I think that the power supply in this might be just a 12 volt power supply and we can bypass that switch mode entirely because I have 12 volts supplied in fact at the moment on this rainy day my 60 volt string of solar panels is still putting charge in. But uh, I have a 12 volt system in the house, I'd be able to run that directly off the 12 volt and just bypass the switch mode entirely. Something I've wanted to do for years, but um, you know, today's the day. Rather than throw it out, I think I'll uh, see if I can fix it first. All right, that looks a lot better to handle. I've noticed there's this funny bulge under here. I'm not sure if that's designed or if it's a heat thing, but it's right near the power switch. Now there's big long shafts here for the screws. I can't get away with using my little Bosch screwdriver here, so I'm going to have to do this with my good old um, Stanley set that I've got here. This has got a bit of everything in it. I love these. I've got several of them. All right, we've got a bunch of screws out. Short ones are all around here. Long ones are along the bottom. And actually, for the first time in history, somebody designing a TV did something useful. They made this section removable separately from everything else. Now, predictably, our power supply unit is a little, uh, yeah, it's a little dusty. And uh, this capacitor I can see here being the main problem. Unfortunately, it's an integrated supply. <clears throat> I could probably find here across this isolation bridge where your lower voltages come in. So it looks like bypassing this might not be as an easier job. But uh, I'm pretty sure I might be able to chop that diode off and feed 12 volts into this board and just to isolate that side. Would be handy if I could. This TV I definitely want to keep around because it still has VGA on it, and that's something I very much use. And VGA to HDMI adapters don't always do what I need them to do. Anyway, um, giving you an idea of the circuit, this is our mains in to our mains voltage switch through to the mains straight into the board here. Often I don't see the mains isolated at the switch um, this is reminiscent of old computer power supplies, to be honest. Um, we've got our MOVs here that still look good. Um, yeah, I should fire this up and see what that output voltage of the supply is. I'm going to do a little bit of looking and a bit of analyzing, and I will come back with my results. All right, so I've disconnected the display connector here. There's a big fat ribbon cable that's shielded, and uh, there's lots of dust. I'm going to get some circuit board cleaner here and just... Try and get the dust off this way in a way that doesn't spread it through the rest of my uh, workshop and sleeping area because I sometimes sleep in here. Alright, that's got a lot of the dust off. I can get a better look here. The other thing could be that the regulators have died. Um, so what I'm looking for here is basically signs of a component that's been hot or failed. Um, or basically just things going on like electrolyte leaking from capacitors. If anything's going to have been gone, it's this big filter cap that I would be leaning to being the problem. Um, so yeah, it's just a case sometimes of these, you just got to sit and stare at the board for a bit. And sometimes the obvious problem will jump out at you. Now, I'm not sure if you guys can see anything wrong with these, but these little capacitors here are bulging. And uh, that one... Looks like, feels like it's about to take off the board. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. That one is shagged. Definitely, that was about to die. It has already died. So that one's got to go as well. 
Now that's a 220 mic 35 volt. And I've still got time in the day. I can probably get to my electronic shop and buy a couple of replacements. It might be that those two capacitors are just what's going on it. Okay, so I had to scrounge through my parts. Now these are both 220 mic 35 volt caps. I have a box full of 220 microfarad 16 volt caps. I can envisage if this is a 12 volt regulator that this could potentially be at you know 15 or 16 volts, more likely 14.5 or so, but running a bit close to the wind for a 16 volt cap. I did find myself a single 330 volt 35 volt. In some cases you can go up in capacitance with these if they're just smoothing caps. Um, but given that there's two of them and that this coil's right beside it, these are probably involved in the switching circuit, in which case that uh, value would be pretty important. So um, I'm gonna have to see if I can buy some. I could probably test if it would work on these 16 volters. It would probably work for a while um, before they eventually died or they might lift off the board as soon as I turn it on. But that's gonna be a bit of effort um to go to before i find that out either way what i need to do is pull this board out in the meantime i'm going to call my local electronic shop and uh see if they've got the right capacitors all right so my electronic shop is uh looking out the back for me to see what they've got in the meantime i gotta get this board out and not stick my screwdriver to the magnets so how do we get this board out there appears to be at least one screw here We'll probably take the connectors off the board in a minute as well. Chuck that on the magnet. So this connector goes here. I know that I've got a photo of this and I've got video because I'm recording it as we speak. Um, this, it's interesting to see what these are. These are speaker connections. I'm pretty sure this is the backlight power. That's crazy small. But uh, that's mains power. And this is going to be the connections for all the switches. This connector here goes onto this little ribbon connector here. That's for the actual display panel. Um, let's go here. Another screw in here. I don't expect that there's going to be much holding these in. A lot of these cheap boards, there are a lot of screw holes in them, but they don't utilize them all. Now, do we have... No, they slotted the VGA connector nicely. Oh, these? <laughs> these just slot off. Oh, that is cool. Okay, I kind of like how they made this. They just pop off. The board, that is the easiest dismantling I've ever done on a TV. That is absolutely crazy. There is a couple of zip ties here we need to just pop off here with some flush cutters. Careful not to actually cut the cable. And that's our board. Wow. I am impressed at how easy that was. All right. Let's uh, rip those capacitors off the board. Right, now that we're under it, we can also see that this terminal here has been warm um, for a considerable amount of time. Has been this side of it, but well, I can only speculate as to why that is at this point, aside from the fact that it's done numerous years of operation. Anyway, let's get these caps off. Now, because there isn't a lot of um, emotional attachment to this, and it's a personal unit, I'm going to cut some corners. Um, let's turn this around. Let's zoom in slightly, maybe a little bit more. I'll have a look here. So these are our two capacitors hanging off the board here. I'm going to trim these nice and flush to help with the removal, because I can see they're obviously bent legs when they installed them. And uh, what I'm going to try and do here is heat it with a soldering iron and walk them out. Um, not something I would do on a board that I was precious about. But this is kind of two steps off the um, the uh, hard waste collection because that's the, happening at this time of year. I'm going to put uh, a bit of blue tack under here. I'm going to find a pair of pliers. All right, so get our extraction fan overhead. Let's grab our iron with a chisel tip. On sort of chisel tip. I can't remember what these are called again. It's been such a while since I've had to order soldering iron tips. But it's got a flat bit on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat one side, the other, and we're just going to alternately heat them and try and walk this out. Let's go for this one because that lead is a bit bent. Normally you can pull through plating off on multi-layer boards like this doing it. So it's not really a recommended way of getting stuff out of the hole. And that feels like that component is actually glued on 
on the other side. Let's have a look. All right, so at this point, it wasn't glued. At this point, it's where we take another shortcut. Um, with capacitors, you can rip the legs right out of them. The aim here is just basically we want to get this far enough that we can chop the actual component off for these flush cutters. And that will allow us to tackle it one leg at a time, which is far safer for the board. There we go, we got that one off. Now I hope that the silk screen here shows polarity. It does, which is nice. So, um, alright, now the other one, we're going to do a similar trick here. We might actually shove, where are we, spudger underneath this one. And uh, we'll try the walking technique again. For this, we need a little bit of solder. Where's it gone? A little bit of solder just to tin the iron here. And uh, walk you out a little bit at a time. Oh, that one almost came completely out. All right. That's pretty good. That one came out. A bit of a crunch sound, which makes me worry that I have ripped the uh, through plating off. I'll just check the legs here. Looks like I haven't. That's good. Okay, now we can continue cleaning up the holes. Need to find my desoldering tool. Okay, so a couple of minutes have passed and we managed to clean these holes up and we got through holes, which is good. The board is clearly marked. Now I've been examining the board and I noticed that on the other side here of uh, this component, there is 12 volt, which supports the theory that that is a 12 volt regulator. I also had a look at one of the connectors in here somewhere, right here, and we can see 12 and 5 volts. So I was pretty right that we've got a dual voltage supply here. So I'd say this is a 12 volt regulator. Somewhere else on the board is a 5 volt regulator. That being said, there are two coils here. This might be generating 12 and 5 volts. I don't entirely know, um, but I can probably get part numbers off this. There is a very real possibility that I can trace back from this little thing here and find a way to inject 12 volts in here and just rip this coil out if I needed to. But uh, we're going to see if uh, my electronic shop comes through with the right components. All right, I did a little bit of research, and um, this little guy here is an MDD-1903, which is a single-channel MOSFET. So that is definitely switching in part of this little circuit here. This, uh, while I can't get a part number, I'm reasonably confident this is a 12-volt regulator. Okay, dropped into my local JCAR store, and they furnished me with a couple of 220 microfarad 63-volt caps. Now, let's go over why I went down this path. Now, they didn't have 35 volt caps in stock, but they had 63s. Now, you might worry about putting in something that's higher voltage into the, into the circuit, but uh, capacitors don't work like that. It's quite safe to go a higher voltage capacitor uh, because that's their maximum operating voltage. So if I'm operating at like 12 or 15 or 16 volts, <clears throat> A 63 volt capacitor is going to run just fine and actually probably for a greater period of time it's going to be running at a lower capacity. If I want to make a 16 volt capacitor and say if I want to series connect a few of the ones I've got, capacitors do funky things when you hook them in series connections. If I was to hook these two guys in series, the capacitance would halve. The voltage would obviously go up but the capacitance would halve or even less. So um, I'd end up with one 110 uh, microfarad capacitor. So I'd have to put four of these, so I'd do two in a series, and then put two sets of those in parallel, and that way I'd end up with something that would be a higher voltage, <coughs> but the same capacitance. It seems strange to use four capacitors to get the same capacitance as you had with one, but that's what would have to be happen. So in this case, these are about the same size. <coughs> we can whack these straight in the board. So, um, the other thing, everybody always calls these UF. Um, on the back of this, right here, let's zoom in. <coughs> See this little symbol here, 220, and there's a symbol between the 0 and the F. That is the Greek symbol micro. So it's used for microfarad. It's not a U, it's actually a micro. You can Google that. You can find it out, but that is a common bugbear I have when talking to people about electronics. 
All right, let's get the soldering iron warmed up and um, turn our fan out on and uh, get these soldered in the board. And I spent a little bit too much time talking um, at the electronics store, so I need a peppermint. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with these, this mark here with a line on it, that's the negative leg. It's also the short one. So we are going to put long leg in the positive side, short leg in the negative side. I hope that's going to fit in the space we have. I may just check that. All right, so I had a look. Um, there's one IO shield here, one IO shield here. The plastic on the back of it is more or less flush with the top of that. But where these are situated, there's a plastic grill. So worst case, if there's not enough headroom, I can chop a square section out of that grill. Okay, so last time I put components in a board, people picked on me for bending the legs to hold them into the board. And I've seen lots of people do that. So we're going to do something else. We're going to be smart ass and we're going to hold it on with blue tack. This is something that apparently Americans have never heard of. It's a Bostic product that was developed for the space program of all things. To stop things flying around the spacecraft. Now I have a roll of 60-40 tin lead solder here. Iron is definitely hot. Yes, and uh, should be able to solder this guy in fairly easily. And this should keep all the purists happy. I'll have nice straight leads. Okay, let's get the other one. Alright, we'll drop our other one through here, making sure to get the polarity correct. That looks about right to me. Look you in like so. Flip the board over. Why don't we zoom in for this bit? Come back a bit and you can see here. Camera is teetering on the edge of the desk, so hopefully we don't fall off. Let's see, somewhere about here. Dexterity is a bit funky today, but hopefully we should be able to get a good solder join. All right, solder off. And flush cutters here. And go ping, 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 and try not to get one of them in the eye. Okay, there we go. We're gonna just triple check polarity. The plus is on this side. And plus is also on this side, and they're both the negatives on that side. I think they're in the correct one. They are 220 microfarads. Let's see if it all fits back together. All right, let's put some protection down before we put the screen down because we don't want to scratch it until we find out if something's wrong. Okay. There's our TV. Back in position. All right, first job is the insulation shield. So we go back over and that has picked up some of the sticky stuff that we had there before. There we go. Where's our screws? Our two silver looking screws. The ones that were for the board. So let's do these up. Let's do that loosely for a minute. Gives this one a chance to get in position. Firm but not too tight. And they are grounding screws. I was about to get confused and then I decided not to. So push that down, that clicks in. Oh, geez, I love that system. Put one there, and that clips in. That's looking good. And these look like they might actually fit. But we'll plug everything in and then swear it at once things don't fit. Um, that one. Uh, is that the right way around? I don't want to force that. Okay. You. Where did you go? I guess that one. I guess that's the audio out. That looks like an audio transformer there. And that's an RF transformer there. I think that's where they went. I will have to check my photos before I fire it up, which I will do. And there is a ferrite bead slash cable gland here. So that can go in that bit. There we go. There's our cover going to take it just a smidgen of maneuvering to get this in position. Um, a bit of creative bending of plastic. But that looks like that's going on relatively painlessly. Um, oh, where are we? There is something holding up this corner. No, it was just snap clips. And by the way, these speaker grills 
these are uh, come off separately too these are a whole separate entity which I had to known that before that would have been better but now it's just a matter of putting the screws back on we'll see if it works all right now this could be a little difficult to uh, see if it works but let's turn power on it didn't explode let's try the green lights come on let's push the on button see how we go red light now let's go green light see if it fires up well so we've got a picture and it looks fairly clean and it seems free of the flickering problem that it had um, I don't have any inputs to put into here at the moment so let's try and give it an input and see what happens actually what I do have is a memory stick that was in the back and I'm pretty sure this has got about six years worth of fireworks recorded on it so I'll plug that in the back and see what happens well, I managed to find the remote, turn the desk lights off, and uh, let's change our AV to um, USB. Not sure if you can see here. I promise we'll change camera angles once we get it working right. But so far, the picture looks pretty good. Right, let's go movie. C drive is what they've recorded it on. Let's have a look here. Um... The cat well, there's one more orbit, so we're talking okay. about every orbit's about 90 minutes now, uh, and then that's one of these is a play button. Out. We're constantly monitoring it all around the world, so we're knowing it's dropped. But we'll be able to pinpoint when that last critical turn this orbit volume is, down. and that will tell us its last path. Um, there won't be a ton of. It's obviously the Chinese space station coming back to Earth. Time, so we're talking about minutes. But this picture looks really nice. It's nice and bright. And we'll be writing real -time updates Nothing really wrong with it. Um, now, there is a play button, but obviously the remote has seen better years. Um, one of these is the play button. I'll go through buttons till one works. We'll be back in a moment. Yep, I found it. This looks pretty good. I really think it was like a 2 bucks 50 problem that we're on this entire TV. So I have replaced it. My newer one is much brighter and much smarter, but... Uh, this gives me a VGA input source. So, we rescued it for a couple of bucks and a little bit of time. I'm kind of happy about this one. Alright, so now that it works, a gentle spray of spray and wipe. And uh, let it sit for a second. I'm going to just give this screen a good clean off. Make it it's worth cleaning now that it works. And it's something that's not going to go to landfill and uh, will not go astray in this household as having a spare display. All right, looks nice, almost like a new one. All right, I hope this was fun and I'll see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, I hope the next video meets your interest. This one may not be. I know I have a wild collection of videos on this channel. You know, I do a whole bunch of different things. But hopefully there's something here for everyone.